This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and by request, since you guys and gals asked for it, we're doing it. This is the HP Spectre X360 15 inch 2017 model with the pen. The pen is back right here, and we're just going to cover art related features here and see how it does. Because, you know, we have a main review of this. If you want to know everything about it as it is as a computer, go ahead and watch that. But this kind of art stuff adds a lot on for those of you who are not art folks. So now we're going to look at this. You use it with Photoshop, with Sketchbook Pro, with Corel Painter. We're going to compare it to, well, obviously we have a lot of pen based products here. I do love to paint and draw digitally, but primarily with Surface. Pro 4 and also the Surface Book this competes with because they both use Entrig Pen technology. Now while we have these all right here, this is the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro 13 inch. This has an, well no kidding, Wacom EMR pen. It's the Cadillac of digitizers. It's got a nice etch matte display. It's obviously not a multi-purpose laptop though, is it? It is available in the 16 inch, however, so if you're looking for that big screen size, one of the things that makes the, well it's really 15.6 inches like the Spectre, but anyway, that, that's one of the things that makes the Spectre really stand out as being a big screen guy. It's $2,500 to $3,000 if you want to move up to the 16 inch model. Granted, the drawing experience is Awesome. Then you have something like the iPad Pro 12.9 inch, probably soon to be refreshed, refreshed with the Apple Pencil, around a grand or so, you know, with the pencil. And it's also a very good drawing experience, but the, the drawback here, I mean, I love things like the tilt support with this pen, it's very natural, the rubbery tip, not too slippery. But the drawback is you don't get desktop programs on there, obviously. And then we have the Dell XPS 13 2-in-1. This uses Wacom's AES technology, which is a lot like entry. There's a pen in a battery in the pen, rather, quadruple A, just like Entrig, and it functions much like Entrig. Same drawbacks. You get the slightly jittery diagonally line, diagonal lines. Palm rejection is good. It's not ultimately good. Then we have the Surface Pro 4 line over here, also Entrig, and I'll show you some direct comparisons in terms of how they draw, but almost identical experience with the Spectre. And now HP claims that they have 2048 levels of pressure sensitivity, which is a little weird because Entrig right now is at 1024. That's what we see in the Surface products. I don't know what's with HP claiming that if there's some new digitizer that Microsoft maybe is going to start using soon too. Really hard to tell the difference between whether there's one or 2000. I will say that there are some things I like better than the HP. We're going to find out what they are now. So let's talk about the pens first. Look at this. They're nearly identical, aren't they? Other than the color, because, well, I went out and got the blue surface pen, so it would match my blue surface type cover, right? That's neither here nor there. Same size, pretty much the same weight, pretty much the same diameter. Both have a little pocket protector kind of clip right there. you got two buttons on the HP pen and no Bluetooth button on the butt end to do an application launch like Surface. Pro's pen has, and the Surface Pro has one button that's hidden under this strip right here. Um, I even tried pulling out the Surface Pro pen nibs and, and seeing if I could switch them. They're slightly thinner, but it kind of does go in there if you want to do that, but I have nothing against HP's default pen nib. I, but I was a little captivated by the thought of having a little more resistance with some of the, the Surface more rough pen nib options. They work interchangeably over here. If you use it, there, there it is. This is the HP pen on the surface. This is what the surface pen looks like on the surface. It's the same thing right there. Likewise here, only we're doing blue airbrushy. You see. So the physicality of the pen experience is well the same. And if you accidentally lost your HP pen, you could go out and buy a surface pen. As far as I know, the pressure level differences, if in fact they're really real, HP hasn't said about that, are likely in the digitizer layer here and not in the pen. I mean, I can't really feel a difference between using one pen or the other, other than the slight surface texture difference on the nibs. So there's that. So this program is Sketchbook Pro. And let's check out the line jitter and we're gonna switch colors to something darker so you can see it and we're going to move over to an ink kind of pen. So the thing with Entrig is if you do a very slow diagonal line you see some jitter and that kind of smooths it out a little bit so let's go to the pencil next. And there it is. Now I'm not the world's greatest straight line drawer, line drawer but that's just the way it rolls. Now if you go quickly, not a problem. So. That's a jitter problem that's typical of Entrig and also happens on Wacom AES active digitizers like that used in the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Yoga and the Dell XPS 13 2-in-1. It's just the way life is. If that matters to you, well, there you go. But it's not going to be any worse than Surface Pro 4, which we have here. Now we're going to do the same thing. About the same, maybe slightly jitterier, jitterier 
is that a word actually? And quick lines, nice, maybe even a little bit smoother than it was on the, uh, the HP that probably has more to do with the, the angle I'm holding it when it comes to speed there versus this kind of slow, it's jittery. Now here, uh -huh, what's that? That is palm rejection failing. That's a problem that I, I don't know. I have with all of the Surface products. I love them quite a lot, but one thing is the palm rejection never works as well as I would like. And I don't know if it's a Microsoft thing. I thought it was an Entrick thing, but this, the HP, has an even bigger display. More, more opportunities to have mishaps, certainly, because resting your hand, cover more of that. And I have a whole lot less problems with palm rejection on this. So thumbs up here, there is something slightly different going on with this HP Digitizer and the 15.6 inch Spectre X360 uh, for the better. Now still on Sketchbook Pro here, we have my orange. So let's see how it does with something, oh, pretty big like uh, an airbrush here. And we're gonna fill in because we need a table, but I want my brush to be even fatter. And then we have a 60 pixel wide airbrush and it's just doing a great job here because our orange shouldn't be floating in the air, right? So there we go. Nice big brush working just fine here. Working on a table, we got it. Bob Ross moment in action. So a Core i7, 16 gigs of RAM, awesome for performance here. I have not seen any lag. I, I don't even see brush latency per se. Let's make that darker. We got our shadow over here. There we go. See, it's just, it's letting me paint and work naturally. Then that's pretty darn nice. I got multiple layers over here. I got my background color. It's all good. I even have, oh my, Corel Painter 2017 running in the background. That's a pig of a program. And I've got a pretty heavy brush loaded right now here. So as we switch back and forth, because we all do need to go between our programs. And so I work on this picture of a hill tribe lady. This is a very fetch oil brush right here, big fat schmeary oil brush, and it's doing a perfectly nice job here. Can, there, I don't even see a delay in fill, which would be a typical thing with Corel Painter 2017. So the performance here is just fine. The precision with Entrig is very good. There's no parallax. It's working great. You can do some really nice art with this. I've been pretty impressed. And I'm not resting my hand on the screen because, well, I'm needing to see what I'm doing here. I'm doing this in a little painterly fashion, but let's rest the hand on the screen and switch to a different kind of brush so I make a bit less of a mess. Goodness only knows. And here's my hand. Oh, we really don't want to do this to the painting, do we? But we can go for really smeary slats on the building. And my hand is resting on this the whole time. And I haven't had any vector mark. What I do is I wear one of those gloves with the fingers cut off when I use any of these, even if I use the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro or the, the iPad Pro. That's just, just the way you have to roll there. But as palm rejection goes, a little bit above Surface Pro 4 again and Surface Book, it's working very nicely. So let's throw a third program in here. Let's do Photoshop CC now. Let's see how it handles all of these running. So here we have a very digital tree that I've painted. And by the way, did you notice I was using the Surface Pro 4 pen? They see they are interchangeable. I didn't even realize I have done that. And I can't really feel the difference there. Except for this one's a little bit slipperier on the glass with the factory nib. And HP is not offering any alternative nibs right now. Now one thing to note is Entrig. Entrig does not support tilt. You can tilt till the cows come home and it's just not going to make any kind of difference. So if your drawing style, particularly pencil sketch artists, often use that for fill shading, uh, you're just not going to get anything tilty here. One nice thing though is that the, the nib extends pretty far out like this. It's a bit more than the, the surface tip by a little bit. The, the way it's designed though, it's a little bit fatter. So if you do happen to tilt out of habit, like I do, because I'm used to being able to do it physically, it will main con maintain contact with the glass at least. So you'll still be making marks. So all in all, this is a very good painting and drawing experience. And it's, you know, it's good enough to do professional work where it's certainly just as Surface Pro 4 and Surface Book are. But the benefit here is you're getting the bigger display and relatively speaking, more affordable pricing. You're getting the dedicated graphics, albeit low end in this. The Core i7, the 512 gig, very fast SSD, 16 gigs of RAM. It's pretty much cadillac out, isn't it? So you've got the performance here to keep multiple art programs running so you can throw them back and forth between each other to work on your artwork. Good, good responsiveness in terms of accuracy. I'm not seeing any pen latency here. We can draw circles all over this poor lady and you can see that she's, well, there's, there's no latency whatsoever on this. It's keeping up with all these rapid strokes. Ooh, poor painting. It, it's a good experience. On a big screen is just a rare treat. Definitely good.